It's the Morning Marketing Machine, here to grow your e-commerce business with proven marketing strategies and tactics, so you can run your business with machine-like precision. My name is Douglas Levin, and let's dive in. Today, I'm super excited because we have an amazing guest for you. If you spent more than two seconds uh, in the Amazon space, you've probably heard of Amy Weiss. Uh, Amy is the C CEO of Amazing at Home Business Consulting. Uh, her coaching focuses on helping brands develop unique products, validate them in the marketplace, source at profitable margins, and launch those products in e-commerce with amazing brand messaging, copywriting, and search engine optimization. Uh, she shares her skills and teaches classes at business organizations locally in San Antonio, Texas, uh, coaching entrepreneurs around the world through virtual coaching sessions and in-person sourcing trips in China. I, I've never been to China. Uh, Amazingathome.com. Uh, she also covers these concepts on her e-commerce tips and tricks podcast called Seller Roundtable. Uh, so I'm joined today by Amy. Uh, so Amy, how are you doing? I'm doing great. That was an awesome introduction. Good job. <laughs> I mean, I know that my bio and stuff is like, <laughs> big old like line of text um yeah. you know i haven't figured out how to make it shorter so <laughs> yeah. hey, hey, you got so many great things going on I and mean, you got to make sure everyone knows about it right you're doing so, you're doing awesome so so thank, you, thank you so much for for being on today and um uh i just want to get started i know we've got a lot of people in terms of that are trying to learn obviously about marketing there's a lot of people that are following that are in the amazon space so and there's probably some people as well that are, are probably still wanting to get started with it. So, so they're in a place where they haven't even done anything yet. So what were you doing uh, before you even got started with Amazon and e-commerce? Oh man. Okay. Well, I was in the military. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was in the U S air force. And um, so I did that for about 18 years. And um, I started active duty um, in 2000 um and then i um you know i i had some jobs before that i worked in retail um i worked at sears at target at mcdonald's i've worked in an accounting firm for home health care um i was a, a nurseryman for a little while um taking care of like horticulture uh plants that went to like lowe's uh home depot and kmart that kind of stuff um, so I did a lot of kind of jobs like that and I was trying to go to college and it was really hard to like work full time and try and go to college full time. And I was like, man, I'm never going to graduate. This is so hard. And, you know, I was trying to pay for it all myself. I didn't want to take on student loans or anything. And so I joined the Air Force and um, I, you know, luckily had uh college paid for i now have five college degrees hanging on this wall <laughs> over here and they're all paid for courtesy of you know my montgomery gi bill and um and i got to travel the world i got to see so many cool things and do so many cool things and um you know met my husband and we have two daughters one of them is my 13 year old's working right behind me here. She's working in the business today. She's designing awesome. web, web pages on my WordPress website. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, it's just, it's been a wonderful ride. And that's what I was doing before I got <laughs> started on this crazy e-commerce journey. Wow, that, that that's that's a lot, and wow, uh, I know like like we talked before and, and like I was coming from just being a drummer and knowing nothing. It sounds like you learned a lot in terms of like obviously like the big box stores that you were working at and military did that help in terms of like the discipline and everything else that you needed kind of once you got started. Though? Yeah, it's great. Well, I was actually, um, in the military, my job was a planner. So mm -hmm. I, um, I mean, I did some, some surveillance for, we used radar to help aircraft kind of see their way around and, um, and follow their airspaces and their flight patterns. But, um, but I also worked in the planning area. So my job was to take big ideas from commanders and turn them into executable war plans. And so, you know, I got to work with many different nations and I got to really see some big ideas 
and turn them into really cool, see them play out, like, you know, turn them into um, really cool executable missions. And so, and then later on I worked in cyber and I was an operations um, officer. So my job was to kind of manage the operations and the missions of our teams. And um, so I got to, again, take kind of smaller ideas, smaller um, objectives, and then turn those into executable missions um, that we, our teams would carry out. And so for me, when I got to my business, solving problems and coming up with, okay, I want to get here. Here's my objective. How do I get there? I already was so well seasoned at planning and kind of figuring out the steps to get there and then learning from my mistakes and, you know, just kind of mapping things out. Um, it, it really, really helped me. It helped me with discipline. It helped me with decisiveness, um, overcoming fear, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's something I know a, a lot of business owners in general have, have problems with. I know I did when I got started, like, like you, you know, you want to make money, you know, want to, you want to do stuff, you want to have a business, all that kind of stuff. But, but figuring out your plan and figuring out how you're going to get there, all that stuff is something that, that so many people just don't know what to do. And, and, and it's so, so awesome. That, like that you were able to, to know all that stuff ahead of time. Like that, that I assume that that put you in a, an amazing position. And like, so, so, so from there, like, like once you got done with that, like how did you get started with, with Amazon and e-commerce then after, after all that? Well, it's funny because I, when I was in the military, I moved back, I was stationed in Korea and then I was stationed in Germany. And when I moved back to the States in 2007, I got stationed in South Carolina and I was still going to college. Oh man, it was, it was not any easier to go to college um, while I was in the military, but I had the discipline now and it was paid for. So that made it a little bit easy. So uh, easier than it was when I was kind of on my own before the military. But I was in college and I was buying textbooks and um, textbooks are so expensive, you know? So I would go on Amazon and buy used textbooks and I saw this little button and this was in 2007. I saw this little button um, that said, sell yours here. And I was like, what? what's that? Oh, I can sell these textbooks so I can buy them used and I can sell them. And then I realized that I could sell anything on there. And so I started selling my textbooks. I started selling CDs, whatever I had like laying around my house, I would make packaging out of just boxes, you know, in Korea, it's funny because in Korea, when you go shopping at the little shops that are outside of the military base, they will pack up all your stuff for you and they make up a box out of nothing. Like they'll just take like cardboard and they like tape it all together and they put like a little handle on it and they send you on your way and you're like, Whoa, you're magical. And you just learn like how to, you know, so I was trying to, to, you know, use my, my inner Korean, <laughs> even though I don't have an inner Korean, I was trying to, to summon one and, um, I would make my own packaging. I would just find like boxes around the house or I would take, which I'm so embarrassed by this now, but I would take like priority mail boxes and turn them inside out <laughs> and tape them, you know, around a CD. Um, you know, so, but this was just a hobby, right? It was just like, okay, well, how much stuff can I sell? And then I started selling on eBay and then I would go to thrift stores. And I remember back then I had this Amazon seller app on my phone, you know, and I would, and this was when the seller app first came out. I want to say this was like in 2008 or 2009. And I was in a thrift store. I was in like Goodwill. And I remember I saw these Polaroid cameras. And by this time I had sold video games. I had sold anything, you name it. I sold it on Amazon, right? Um, and I didn't like eBay because people were so scammy on eBay. Like mm -hmm. I, it was more of a problem to deal with eBay. But Amazon was like easy and it was great. So anyway, I'm in this Goodwill and I'm like looking at these, they had this bin full of these old Polaroid cameras. And I was like, I'm just going to look this up on Amazon and see, you know, it was, they were like $8 each mm -hmm. on Amazon. These were, there was only like one or two of them in stock because they're used, you know, mm -hmm. and they were selling for like 60 bucks. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, was, that, that was the bug. That was when I went from like, 
selling a textbook or some CDs I had in my house to like, whoa, Mm -hmm. you know, you could turn this into a serious business, you know? Um, So anyway, I, you know, I, I dabbled with it a little bit, but then my husband and I got stationed in Hawaii. And so we, I stopped because back then everything was merchant fulfilled and I wasn't going to merchant fulfill from Hawaii. You know, Hawaii is 2000 miles away from any other major landmass. Shipping isn't cheap. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, no, I'm just going to take a break from it for a little while. And so um, I still had my Amazon account. It's been active since 2007. It's crazy, Mm -hmm. but, um, but I took a couple of years off. So that's how I got started in e-commerce. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so it sounds like obviously like a Polaroid was kind of like that big thing that got you going then. And then like, so you t- took some time off and obviously you, you ended up, uh, obviously you created your own brand. You created multiple brands here and you're doing really well with it. So how did you kind of get from Hawaii and not being on Amazon anymore back to like in arbitrage, obviously to the point that you're doing private label and you're, obviously to the point you're at now, which is like amazing. Like how, how, how did that, that come about? Well, you know, when I was in Hawaii, I took a job in IT mm-hmm. and I had never worked really in IT before, but I got a job um, working on some software because of my knowledge in the military, it was actually easier for this contracting company to hire me and train me to build servers than it was for them to hire somebody who knew how to build servers and train them on this military process that I knew. So they hired me and trained me to build servers and trained me to be an IT professional, right? And I moved up in IT and at this time I had just finished um, my, I got my, got my bachelor's degree in business uh, management. I had an associates in business admin. And so I had a lot of business degrees at the time and I started I started my my master's degree in business uh, it was going to be a master of science in business and it was like the same information right and so I got this job in IT in Hawaii and um, and I'm you know working in IT and I'm thinking well, maybe I'll do something else instead of another business degree maybe I'll do something in IT so I started taking uh, master's classes in cybersecurity and I was hooked. I was like, this is fascinating. It's nothing like the same old business classes that I've been taking. And it's so cool and different, you know, and it took this new skill that I had learned and I got into cybersecurity, right? So I started working in cybersecurity, well, not working, but learning about cybersecurity. I got my master's degree. Um, I was in a dual degree program, so I actually got my MBA at the same time. So I finished my master of science in cybersecurity, and then I worked on my MBA after that and finished that off. Um, but anyway, I got this job offer to come to San Antonio, Texas and work in cyber for the Air Force. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a cool job. I'm so excited about this. You know, and I was able to use some of my other skills as well that I had um, gained from the military earlier. So it was like this perfect, you know, opportunity. So I took my husband retired from the Air Force in um, in Hawaii, and you know he was done with his twenty years, and he didn't really have he didn't know what he wanted to be when he grew up, you know? So (laughs) he was like, I'm going to explore some stuff. And, Mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, well, I'll be the career girl, you know? And so I take this job in San Antonio. So we move our whole family back to San Antonio and we're, we're living in San Antonio. And this is the first place we've ever lived where the military didn't tell us we had to live there. Right. Mm -hmm. Like this was the first time where we were like, Oh my gosh, you know, they're not going to move us. They're not going to tell us we have to move in three years. You know, it's like this newfound exploration and freedom. <laughs> so we, um, so we landed, I took this job in cyber in San Antonio and, um, and got to do some really cool things. Um, really fun, really cool things. Um, but anyway, the hard part is that I also have a health struggle, right? So mm-hmm. the military actually medically retired me when I was in uniform after almost 10 years. 
um, in uniform because I had severe chronic migraines. Oh, okay. And so what that means is I get 15 or more migraines a month. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, and I was just absolutely miserable. <laughs> um, and so I had been on so many medications. And, you know, when your head is not connected to the rest of, you know, when you're just miserable and your head just feels like it's being crushed every day, it's hard, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was working this whole time and I was trying to, you know, work through and get the health care necessary to try and take care of it. The problem is there's no cure for migraines and nobody really knows what causes them or how to fix them. So you try all these different things. Well, anyway, my migraines, pe different people have different triggers. And my migraines are caused by lights, smells, certain foods, <laughs> sounds, like my environment. It's, it's really hard for me not to get a migraine because my triggers are nearly unavoidable. And so I have three cats. One of them is sitting right here, like staring at me. It's really <laughs> weird. But, uh, you know, these cats have litter boxes. And these litter boxes have a very strong smell. And anybody who's had a cat or knows somebody with a cat, nearly every time you go into their house, you can smell that they have cats, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't matter how much you clean the litter box. It doesn't, it just doesn't fix the problem. And we were cleaning the litter box twice a day. We had three litter boxes and three cats. It wasn't helping. And I was getting these terrible headaches and, um, <laughs> just like walking behind me, right now. <laughs> but, um, but it wasn't working. And so I have always been one of those people, Douglas, who would carry around a notebook of ideas. I was always sketching ideas like Pinterest was my idea. You know, it doesn't matter. I didn't execute it, you know, <laughs> right. but I had so many ideas for apps and websites and products. And I would always sketch in this little tiny spiral bound notebook and carry it with me. So I was like, you know what? I've tried every litter box on the market. I have tried everything I can. Nothing fixes this problem. Mm -hmm. So when I was working here in San Antonio in 2017, I would, every time I would travel, I traveled 10 months out of the year for this job. Every time I would travel, I would sketch a better litter box. I would sketch and like, okay, what is this? Like, how do I solve this? But when I'd get done with the sketch, it was just the same thing. It was the same. It was like another version of something I'd already tried. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I was like, man, I don't know, but I can't give up on this because I'm not going to get rid of my pets. Right. You know? So I kept going, kept going, kept going. And a couple of months later, I like woke up and had like a eureka moment at like two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, the problem is the litter box. Holy man. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I get up out of bed and I start tearing apart a laundry basket, like with laundry mesh. And I start putting that over the top of a tub and I'm in the laundry room where the cat litter box is and I'm dumping this litter out over the top. And I'm like, the problem is the litter box. Mm -hmm. All these years we've been cleaning the litter box inside of the litter box. We need something to pour it into so that we can quickly clean it. At first I just thought I was inventing something to clean it faster because mm -hmm. I was tired of scooping, you know, and I knew we had to clean it more often in order to eliminate the smell. Right. Right. So anyway, as soon as Home Depot opens, I'm in there. I'm getting whatever supplies I could get to try and I'm trying to be all secretive about my idea. You know, like this, this poor little old man trying to help me in Home Depot is going to steal my idea. You know, right. anyway, now I know that that's not the case. You know, I've helped many inventors and many entrepreneurs bring products to market now, but, um, but anyway, um, so I get home, I build the prototype. I basically take hardware mesh, hardware cloth, Mm -hmm. and it's like the quarter inch stuff that looks like a, you know, like looks like a grid. Okay. Um, and I staple it to a, um, a wooden frame and I screw in handles to that wooden frame and that goes inside of a waste basket. And I take the litter box, the nasty litter box, and I just pour it in and all the nasty stays on top mm -hmm. in that hardware mesh and all the clean litter goes through to the bottom. And so literally I can now clean my three litter boxes all at one time in under 60 seconds, dump, 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 get rid of all the waste at one time and dump the clean litter back in the clean in the litter boxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this is great. I have something here. 
but I had no idea. Yeah, I have an MBA. Yeah, I have a couple of business degrees. Does that make me like somebody who knows how to bring a product to market and develop a product from scratch or right. an engineer or anything? No, I didn't know how to do any of that. Mm -hmm. And so, but I was determined, I knew I had something because after I started using this prototype, like a week later, we didn't smell the litter boxes at all, at mm -hmm. all. And so we were like, how is this possible? We thought we went nose blind and we invited friends over to our house and we're like, um, can you smell it? Because maybe we just don't know. Maybe we don't smell it anymore. Right. And, um, and they're like, no, that's amazing. They're in our little tiny laundry room with three boxes, you know, and they're just like, how, how is that possible? I've never been in somebody's house where I, where I'm on top of the litter box and I don't smell anything. Right. And so then we went on a mission to try to figure out what the heck we did. Like, what did we do that suddenly eliminated all the odor? And we used to have to dump the litter after like a week of using it because it would just be gross, you know? Mm -hmm. And now we could use the same litter for like 20 days with no odor. And we had no idea what we did. So what we learned was that those clumps that are in the litter box, when you scoop or whatever, some of them stick to the bottom of the box mm -hmm. and you break them up. And what happens is those things are the stinkiest things on earth. And when you break them up, they contaminate the clean litter and clean litter doesn't stink. Mm -hmm. So all these people who are using a sifting litter box or her, who are using a scoop, all they're doing is breaking apart those clumps mm -hmm. and they're contaminating. So their cleaning efforts are useless mm -hmm. because they're contaminating this litter, right? So basically, we invented a better way to clean the litter box that also eliminates odor and also lets you use the same litter over and over and over again for 20 days. So it saves, I mean, you, it pays for itself the first month you use it, like mm -hmm. more than over, you know, again. So anyway, I had went on this journey. That was my start. That was my start in private label. I went on this journey to invent a product and I didn't want to use invent help or any of the inventor kind of things because honestly that didn't make business sense to me it didn't make business sense to pay somebody thirty thousand dollars to take my prototype and turn it into a drawing that's not a business mm -hmm. that's not bringing that product to market that's not doing anything for my marketing you know and so i was like nope this isn't the way that big brands bring products to market it's not it can't be so I'm going to figure it out. And that's what I did. I started figuring it out and I shared everything that I learned along the way. Wow. That is awesome. Like, like, and, and in terms of what you're saying, like, like there's so many people, like I, I know that I, I do this whenever I'm thinking of like you, you overcomplicate things. You you think, Oh, well it's gotta be, I gotta hire somebody and do this and do that. But like you had the presence of mind to go, Hey, I'm, why am I going to waste 30 grand on this? Like it's, it, for them to come up with a drawing. I mean, that, that is, that's, that's much better thinking than you're usually going to see out there. And, and I mean, in terms of your first product too, I think it's the same thing that we did on ours is, is like, um, it was more of like a passion project. It's something like, well, you, you're not seeing that out there. And, and I, I think a lot of people, they kind of, they, it's, it's that entrepreneurial like thought process of like, well, it's not out there, but I have to solve this problem. And then what am I going to do to solve it? And it may not happen like overnight, like yours, you said it took you a while, but um, just by, by sticking with it, you found the solution to your problem and it helps you. Right. And it helps like the world now. So that, that is, that is awesome. Like, did you always like know, like, did you always have that like entrepreneurial kind of spirit in you? Like were you always basically an entrepreneur then? Yeah. I mean, I always had like little side businesses, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> Even when I was in the military, I had like a nonprofit fitness business. I had, you know, all kinds of like little side businesses. I used to paint um, when I was in Hawaii. I had a little Etsy business where I would paint um, designs on wine glasses. I would make like custom wine glasses for people. Um, so I've always been kind of creative and, and um, I love that you can take any idea and basically monetize it. That's what's beautiful about entrepreneurship and what's beautiful about business you know mm -hmm. so yeah I've always been like that I've always carried around a notebook of ideas my poor husband he's like the opposite of me <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like me you know waking up at two o'clock in the morning babe 
I have an idea. And he's, you know, he's so supportive of me, but you know, I'm sure I drive him crazy because <laughs> I'm always working on something like right now. Um, on my daughter's desk over there, I'm working on my next cat product, you know? So it's like, you know, I'm always prototyping something. I'm always working on something. And then I also have, you know, I built a, a full, while I was developing this product, I did some white label kind of products, right? Like where I added, they were more private label cause I added my own designs and then I own those designs. But, um, but yeah, I, I launched a whole line of products like while I was developing this product and, you know, cause I didn't want to just have like a one, a one product brand. I wanted to like kind of build different things out and try different things. I tried retail arbitrage during that time. Um, I did wholesale, you know, I was trying to like sell wholesale products, uh, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, it was, it's been a fun journey to like learn the whole Amazon private label because it's Amazon private label is different than just like, you know, um, what I was doing before, which was just like a hobby selling basically used things on Amazon. Um, so when I decided to go on this journey of inventing a product and I decided, okay, I'm going to make, this isn't just a product. Like this is a business. I wrote a business plan. I went and took classes at my local small business association. I had, um, you know, mentors look over my business plan. I hired a lawyer to do all of my documents, you know, like I hired an accountant, like I set everything up like a business. And I, that's what I always, that's the advice I always give people. Like, don't think of this as like Amazon, think of this as a business and you will succeed because Amazon's just a sales channel. That's what it is. But if you set up your business like a business, I knew what I needed to get started. I knew how much money I needed. I knew what my three-year plan was, what my five-year plan was. You know, I gave myself something to work towards where a lot of people, they just get started and they like follow these formulas, you know, and then they run out of money because they didn't take the time to plan or they're not really sure what to do beyond Amazon because they haven't studied their market or their customer and then they don't know how to market. You know, when I do launch calls, you know, now that I'm a consultant, um, when I do launch calls, I walk people through like, okay, we need three forms of external traffic. Where else are you going to advertise this product off of Amazon? Right. And so many people have no idea because they've only followed this narrow vision of they haven't studied their market at all. And you know, they, well, maybe they did a little bit, but they're, they're really just focused on, I just want to beat this competitor over here who has $30,000 in revenue every month. I just want to beat this competitor. And it's like, study what that competitor is doing off of Amazon then, and then you're going to learn why they have that amount of revenue a month. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, it, it's really the thing like, like, like it, when you're getting started with some of this stuff, if you haven't done like private label before, you don't really know. Like I, I know in terms of the perspective I was at and like a lot of people I know were at when they're started, like you're, you, you just have like that arbitrage mentality or maybe in some ways like the wholesale, of like, oh, well, I just need to get there, but you don't really understand it. And, and, and that's what's so cool in terms of what, like your approach with it. Like, like obviously, first of all, like I, I, I've said this before, like you need to have a support system in place when you're going to do something with business or else you're not going to succeed. And, and obviously you've got your husband who's been awesome. I know my wife's been amazing. Like you need to have something because no matter what happens, there's always going to be rough times that come up or you, or I was like, you were saying you get, you get this great idea at two in the morning. You want to have someone that can deal with it. Right. When, when you're bugging them at two in the morning or whatever it is, like I'm sure at this point, my wife is sick of me telling her 5 million things a day about what's going on. Right. But, but you're, you're like, so, in a, such a great position where, where you've got a great support system and, uh, and, so true. and, and it really helps you too, in terms of like the, the struggles and stuff that come up. So obviously I, I know that not everyone, like every, everyone goes through tough times, right? No matter what you're doing, like I, I've been fully open in terms of some of the struggles that led me away from uh, Amazon as my sole uh, uh, sales channel. So like, can you take us through like what might be your biggest struggle that you've kind of dealt with as an entrepreneur and like how you ended up getting through it? Yeah, honestly, my biggest struggle was leaving my job. Mm -hmm. It was the scariest thing I've ever done. Um, my, we had brought my husband home um, to work in the business because as many people find out when they start on this journey, 
it quickly becomes another full-time job. It's not a side hustle. Like when you begin to start to scale it, you're like, oh man, like this, this is going to take more than just two hours a day of work. Right. Um, now if you just need that side money, well then you can keep it at two hours a day. But if you, if, if it starts growing and you realize, okay, in order for me to actually make money with this, I need to scale it. It becomes a full-time job. So we brought my husband home. He was a teacher at the time and we brought him home to work full-time in the business. And of course we weren't paying him yet because we weren't profitable. We were still reinvesting in our inventory. We were paying off our molds from the product and you know, all of that. And so we get to a point, Amazing at Home was born because I started writing product listings. I started writing product listings as a side income to help pay off some of the debt of, you know, my molds cost $60,000. Oh, wow. So I was determined to get rid of that debt, to get moving forward, to sell enough products, you know, all of that. And so my startup costs were a little bit more than a lot of people's when you're developing something completely unique from scratch. Um, so, you know, I'm like trying to bring in any side, side income to, to, to pay off this debt and to really move my business forward. So I started writing product listings because when I was in wholesale, when I was doing wholesale, that Amazon wholesale model, not the traditional retail wholesale model, I was buying products wholesale and selling them on Amazon. I discovered that if you could write a good product listing with SEO, you could sell anything. To anyone because it's all about unique targeting it's all about using the right keywords and it's all about placement on the page so I was able to play with my own listings and realize like dang I'm pretty good at this and so I started on Fiverr started listing started listing my um, my services to write listings on Fiverr and people would come to me with these saturated products and I was able to turn their products around, like get them selling simply by rewriting and retargeting that listing. So it's not a felt letter board, it's an office sign, or it's not a, um, you know, it's not a picture frame, it's a gift for mom, right? So I was able to completely rebrand and retarget these listings for people and they were like, it was amazing. I mean, I thought I was gonna have to give up on this product and you know, so word really quickly traveled and people started asking to consult with me. They're like, well, how did you figure this out in your business? Like, I want to learn from you. Like, you just did this with my listing. Now I'm ordering more. I thought I was going to have to liquidate. How can I learn from you? And I was like, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a way for you to, what? And so then I was like, okay, so over the weekend, I own this domain name, Amazing at Home. I was going to do a video, like a YouTube channel that like, showed people at home doing cool things, right? That's, that's the whole amazing at home thing. That's where that came from. But I had this domain name and over the weekend, I was like, I gotta get off Fiverr and all these people are reaching out, asking to consult with me. And I'm like, I don't have a way to, uh -huh. okay. So I built this text-based website over the weekend, right? Well, my first clients that, you know, besides the ones that I had turned around their listings and all of that word was spreading, and then all of a sudden I'm getting all these consultation client consultation clients, their stuff is doing incredibly well. They're making six figures off one product in a month. I'm helping them make great decisions. I'm helping them work with their suppliers, all this kind of stuff. And word keeps traveling. I haven't done any advertising. Douglas, before I knew it, here I am in my six figure job working in cybersecurity, like very good job. I, go out at lunch hour and I would take a call. I would come home from work and I would be on calls till 10 o'clock at night. I would get up the next morning and do it all over again. I was taking leave from work to be able to work on my businesses. And I, I remember getting to a point where I told my husband, I was like, and this wasn't even my private label business. Like I was still trying to fit that in and I'm consulting with people. And I'm just like, Oh my gosh. I, I remember telling my husband, I said, honey, even if I work all weekend long, and I work every single night, all every night this week, for the next two weeks, I'll still be a month behind. But I was terrified. I didn't know if I could do this on my own. I had a six figure job. I have a 5,000 square foot Texas mansion that I have to pay for, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I was terrified. What if I can't do it? 
that's the biggest hurdle is believing in yourself and knowing that you can do it. And so I, we met this guy Efton, he's a life coach and just a really cool guy. And, um, and he happened to be in my husband's Bible study group from church and they were over on a weekend and they had like this men's group, like party. And I was pissed. I was like, I do not want to go out there. No, none of these people understand me. They're all like people with jobs and they have no idea. I don't fit in with them. Right. I don't want to go socialize with these people. I got work to do. Right. It's time to grind. But I was like, okay, you know, put on the wife hat, let's go out and let's socialize. So I go out and I start talking and I meet Efton and his wife, Sabrina, and they're entrepreneurs as well. And we start meeting every week for like an hour. We just have like a little Zoom call. And Efton tells me, Amy, you have to quit your job. And I'm like, I can't, I can't quit my job. I can't, I pay the mortgage, you don't understand. He's like, Amy, you just told me you're turning down clients. What do you think is gonna happen? when you take all of that energy and all of that time and you put it into your businesses, I'm like, I don't know. I'm dude. I don't know what's going to happen. And I can't take that risk. I have kids, you know? And, um, so he helped me, he helped me plan it. I actually did a live session with him. It's on the amazing at home Facebook page. So many people have gotten so much from that because this is so many people, so many people's biggest fear. And, um, and so he helped me kind of make that leap. And within three months I had tripled my income, my previous wow. income. And so that's the thing. But for two weeks after I left my job, I had nightmares that it wasn't going to work out that I don't know. It was the scariest thing I've ever done, but how I overcame it was just knowing and believing in myself and swallowing those fears every day and knowing that I could do it. Well, and especially obviously when you when you think about like this time as it is right now, everyone is is scared. Even with with things changing, obviously more people going out, you're still worried of like what's going to happen. And obviously, like you were obviously with a different situation, but I mean, when you, when you're to the point like you took action, right? You had like like immediately as you're starting to get clients, you're coming up with with the website, you're you're kind of figuring stuff out, and and it's it's the thing like I said before is like as you if you just keep going and you don't and you stick with it eventually like you'll you'll see that snowball effect start to take place and it really is just about getting your mind right i mean like you said you were ha having those struggles i've had like like negative mindset issues for years and it was only until recently that i was able to kind of get out of that that's like that's honestly from what i've seen from a lot of business owners it's like that's the name, name of the game if you can get yes. your mind right that's when you can like see like you saw like like, like you were just booming and like tripled your income, like just like that. And it, it's not, it's not an accident. Like you, if you let yourself kind of do what, what's needed, it just, it starts to happen for you as you keep doing the work. And yeah. it, it, it is the thing though, like, like I was actually just talking to my wife about this. Like we, we have a different lifestyle. Like, like if you want that kind of like, I want the six figures, I want the stable income, then, then obviously you can go that route versus what we're doing I, like if when you've got kids to support that can sometimes be a stress but mm -hmm. but there's so many highs that you get out of it just in terms of being your business owner you can set your own hours you can your your income is limitless really it's it's at that point you're like you, you said I mean it, it just puts you in such an amazing position uh, that, that you just have to take take that and just kind of go with it um, so kind of switch switching uh, past a little bit I know that you, you've talked about obviously the consulting part of it you help out a lot of people um, in terms of getting their private label ideas going here. So can you take us like, if you were to help somebody, like like how would you conduct like market research and kind of like validate like their ideas so it can kind of help out anybody that might be listening here today? Yeah, so this is something that a lot of people struggle with um, is, you know, you don't want to use product research software necessarily because you're only seeing what's currently selling. You're not seeing what people are needing that isn't in the market, right? So I teach people how to study the market. I mean, and market research has been, you know, used for years, you know, that's what the buyers from all the major retailers use, you know, um, they're looking at what does the market need and what are the current trends? So. I just help people kind of study the trends and get out of, get out of the trenches, get out of the trenches where you're just focused so much on this product and you know what you need to do to beat your competitor and look at like, 
who is buying from you and why are they buying from you and not your competitors? And even in my listing optimization masterclass, I, the, the third class in our 10 glass series is all about defining your differentiation because guess what? Even if I'm selling this water bottle here, this Bubba water bottle, if I do a better job of connecting with the customer than my competitors, the customer is going to buy from me. If I identify that customer's need and exactly how my product uniquely meets their need, I'm going to sell more. If I show that in my photos, so if my customer's biggest need is that this thing keeps the water cold, right? I'm gonna do such a good job of explaining how this, the thickness of our you know, walls, of our water bottle, keep it cooler for longer because we specifically designed the thickness and the material to keep it cooler for longer. I'm gonna say that even if it's the same exact material as all of my competitors, and I'm not just gonna say it in my listing, I'm gonna point it out in my photos because then that creates doubt in the customer's mind. When they go to that next competitor, they scroll down in your Amazon listing and they click on that sponsored product ad of the next one, they've already looked through your photos, right? And they saw that and they're like, oh, that's interesting. It's a specific thickness. That is what keeps it cooler for longer. Oh, okay, interesting. Then they, okay, got it. Well, I'm gonna go look at this other one. They go through their photos. Oh, but this one doesn't have that thickness. It's, it might not work as well. Oh, I'm gonna go back, back. You know, you wanna create doubt in their mind. You wanna create trust and you wanna create doubt. You wanna explain why. Don't just say, it's made of premium stainless steel. Why? Why is it made of premium stainless steel? What does that mean to the customer? Why should they care? It's crazy, the conversions and how they change. You might think that your main keyword is water bottle, but it might not be that at all. It might be something specific to, you know, an office worker. It might be something specific to a specific accessory. And so that's the thing is really define your differentiation. And the easiest formula to do that is what is your customer's problem? How do you uniquely solve that customer's problem? And what does their life look like now with your product in it? That's the easiest way to develop your brand messaging. That's the easiest way to show it in your photos. Define their problem, define your solution. And even if your solution, even if you're selling the exact same phone case as everybody else, if you do a better job of addressing their need in your copywriting and your photos, you will win every single time, every single time. And, and, and that's, that's the thing I think a lot of people don't really like think about very much. And, and I think you did a really great job in terms of like bringing it down. I mean, really when you're, if you think about it from the, like, the customer perspective, like too many brands, they get focused on, well, our, my product is great because it's great. But like, like uh, actually thinking about like how it's going to solve their problem. I mean, that's ultimately what this always comes down to. And you, you laid it out uh, great. So like you would say that like in terms of like great piece of advice that would give that you would give to somebody kind of, if they're looking to, to, to uh, make their products better, like their private label products, like would that be your best advice then in terms of uh, like what could help them kind of getting a better result? Yeah. Well, I would say definitely if you're considering a product, um, it's, it's hard for me to give it in one piece of advice because I teach this over like multiple hour long classes in my mastermind group. Like right now we're on our second class and ideation and you know, the first one just gave them four exercises to come up with product ideas. And the second one, which was an hour long, we're getting into like, how do you delve into that idea and find the real opportunities there? And in this morning's class, I started with dog toys and my end product was a floor mat for the crate. <laughs> <laughs> because I get into the customer mindset. So really what I would tell you to do is if you can't explain to me why a customer is going to buy your product and not your competitors, 
then you need to go back to the drawing board on your product decision until you can define that. If you can say the reason why my customer, the reason why customers are going to buy my product instead of my competitors, my closest competitors, and this is even for me, you know, yeah, I invented a litter box cleaner, but guess what? I still have to say why people are going to buy my product instead of just a scoop that cost them a dollar. I have competitors. So do you, all of us have competitors. Why will someone buy your product instead of the reasonable alternative? The reason that so many people fail is because they go, well, my differentiation, I'm going to make this water bottle green because nobody is selling a green water bottle. Well, are customers looking for a green water bottle? Does your differentiation matter? And that's where market research comes in. And that's where you defining why the customer is going to buy your version and not your competitors is so, so, so important. So just get out on a journey to discover that. And, uh, and you're going to win every time then, because then you're going to be able to validate that when you go to launch this product, you can launch it with confidence knowing, yes, I know exactly why customers are going to buy mine. I know how to define it. I know how to show it in my photos. I know how to show it in my brand messaging, my marketing, and they are going to be raving fans of my product. And, and if you go with that approach too, what's great is, I mean, if, if you think about like, not just an Amazon side of it, but like like actually like building a real brand, like something that you say if you want to sell in the future or if you want to take away from Amazon, like anything like that. I mean, you really have to have those brand values. You have to have like, why are they going to buy it from, is, from you guys as opposed to any, anybody else? I mean, that's something I always talk about, the same kind of ideas. Like, like obviously I, I approach it more in terms of like taking it off away from Amazon, but it's the same premise. Like, like you ultimately have to have an idea like in the customer's mind, what is going to make them want your product versus everybody else? It's just not about, like you're saying, green. It's it, like you have to come up with, with something that's going to help solve their problem, something that is going to, with like, I know Russell always says, like building those thousand raving fans. Like what is going to help your brand to build that following, right? So, so yeah, like, like that is, that's a great piece of advice, I would definitely say. So, so any, any, um, like I know we like uh, we, we have a lot of great like uh, book readers and podcasts. That's, a, that's always a great way in terms of like the mindset aspect to really get your mind right. And, and in terms of like learning from other business owners that have done a great job. Like, do you have any like any great books or podcasts that you'd recommend uh, that have a great impact on say you and your, your business as well? Yeah. Um, I love for podcasts. I love, um, the social media marketing world podcast. They have an incredible, um, social media podcast and it has taught me so much about marketing my products and growing my brand. And I just learned so much from them. Um, and then in terms of books, I love everything Mike Michalowicz puts out. Like he's my business crush. He was on my podcast oh, awesome. <laughs> and I was just like, Oh my gosh, I hope I can contain myself. I have a business crush, but um, he, his book clockwork is incredible. Uh, it has changed so many entrepreneurs lives. Like basically the premise is you need to plan to be able to leave your business for four weeks. You're going to take a four week vacation from your business and you're going to come back better than you found it. And what that does is, or you're going to, you know, it's going to be better than you left it, right? When you come back to it. And the whole thing, what that does for you is that really makes you think about, okay, wait, do I have something that's scalable? Do I have something that I can pass off? Do I have processes in place? So you plan to take this four week vacation and you go, okay, somebody has to be able to send this email. Okay, somebody has to be able to check this. Okay, somebody has to be able to fulfill this order. Oh my gosh. But he writes the book in a way that really helps you understand like how to make that possible. And suddenly you just see possibilities for your business that you didn't see before. And he gives all these free worksheets and everything that are, you know, are part of his book and everything. But just, I mean, he has a podcast as well, but I mean, really great. I mean, he has another book called The Pumpkin Plan, which was so good that he wrote before that. His next book is Fix This Next, which talks about like the one thing you need to concentrate on your business and fix. Um, so yeah, I love all of his books. I think they're really great. I'm reading Entree Leadership by Dave Ramsey right now. And that one has been really, really good about just how do you develop leaders in your business? Um, how do you yourself become a better business leader? Um, so now as I'm kind of 
growing, my businesses are growing up. I'm, I'm realizing I need to be the leader that um, my business needs me to be. So that's been a wonderful, um, a wonderful book as well. Um, as far as tips for all these podcasts and books, I use an app called Scribd. It's S-C-R-I-B-D. It's six bucks a month. And seriously, you can find any audio book on there. They have all the magazines, all the podcasts, all the newspapers. They even have published business plans. Like you, you can find sheet music on there. I mean, <laughs> everything you can imagine is on this app. And so many people pay for like Audible with it, which I think is like twice as expensive. Mm -hmm. And all you get is audiobooks. You don't get all of these other books. Like what I love about Scribed as well is they have snapshots of nearly every single book. So if I'm not sure if I want to read it, I'll just read the snapshot and get the gold from it. And then, then I'll, you know, if I'm really motivated by it, then I'll go back and either listen to the book or read it. But for six bucks a month, man, that app has saved me. Awesome. Yeah. I, I haven't heard of Scribe before. I'm going to have to check it out. I, I, I know that there's, there's times like I'll, I'll get into a book, right? You, you're, you're recommended. Oh yeah. Read this one. And then you get into it and you're like, Oh, well, um, like for whatever reason, you just don't connect with it. And then at that point you're like, well, if it was say audible or you bought it, you're already in right at that point. So it's like, well, what are you going to do? Like, so, so I'm definitely going to check that out. So, um, so we're heading down the home stretch here and, and I want to thank you again so much for, for coming on and sharing some of your story and your insight here. So, so it was, it was so great talking to you and, and can you tell me like, how can our listeners find out more about what it is that you do? Yeah, so um, we have a mastermind group, and that's where we just have a group of founders, and we are teaching all this lovely curriculum of how to find great product ideas, how to validate them, how to source them, you know, all that stuff. And so that's $49 a month. It's pretty awesome. Um, and we go live twice a week, and, um, you know, you get access to all the replays and everything that we do there. And so you can learn more about that at amazingathome.com slash mastermind. But no matter what, I've got a Facebook group called Amazing at Home. You can look us up. We've got tons of free training in there. Um, there's lots of great stuff on my blog at amazingathome.com. So, yeah, that's pretty much the best, best place is either my Facebook group, Amazing at Home, or on amazingathome.com. Come on, visit us and see what, what we've got going on and um, get some great value from all the content we have there. Awesome. Yeah. And we'll definitely have the links below this video. So everybody check it out. And Amy, it was so great talking to you. Uh, thank you again for, for coming on today. And uh, for everyone else out there, have a great day. And we'll talk to you guys on uh, next time. All right. Bye. bye.